all I can say. The Apostolic College today was undescribable. God did so much in revelation, in connections, in relationships, in definition, clarity. Just a wonderful time. It's been a long weekend. It's been a long month. We started rehabbing this building 31 days ago, 32 days ago. That's right. And one week ago, this did not look like this. It was a shell with some wood put together by my dear brother. That's right. And overnight, God gave us grace to do it. Yes. I was sharing with Connie in the back. I travel quite a bit. I've met many, many ministry gifts. I remember when we were in the Blue Building on St. Clair Avenue. Amen. I don't know how any ministry gift ever came to that church. <laughs> Much less came back. I don't even know how I went and preached that. But Connie came. Right, that's right. Preached like she would preach any place else. That's right. Sat in our little hospitality suite, <laughs> which was literally this <laughs> one. Literally. And I went from there to there. And we would all get in that little room. <laughs> Johnny said the food was good. <laughs> but let me say something to you. Jesus. She knew. We couldn't give her what she deserved. That's right. God, that's right. That's right. The came and said, Apostle, I've known you for a long time. Hallelujah. I'll come. I had to work things out. Mm-hmm. And she would always come. That's right. Wow. Thank you. We ain't there yet. But I promise God. Okay. Hallelujah. I said, God, when the day comes. That I can do right like I want to do. We in there because we we in that city, so it takes a little bit longer to get there. Mm-hmm. You can get all philosophical. What you want to do, it take a little longer. I don't care what you say. Mm-hmm. You spiritualize it however you want to do it. It take a little longer. But we're further than we've been. And she came, it's not Jesus, and she came over and over. That's what I call a real servant. Connie has been through many versions. This is a new version. So we'll we'll see what this version says. It's always good though. And it's always revelatory. (laughs) So I'm going to get out the way and bring my friend up. And turn loose on y'all. To tell us what's on God's mind. Come on, give God some praise. It's encouraged me, amen? Because, you know, I wasn't raised in church, so I've I've been rude with God. I should already be dead, but he just uh, understood my ignorance. But I said, how come you all never do nothing like this for for one of my friends, for people in ministry that I know? And I come here today and see this and what God has done. I tell you, when you are free to do the work of the Lord, it does... You do have to pay your dues. You do have to pay your dues. 
but it is well worth the manifestation. Amen. I just bless you. I love you. I love the building. I love what God has done. I hear the word of the Lord say concerning this building. Uh, I hear the word of the Lord say it, and, and I, want, I don't want to tell none of your business. Does everybody know who owns the building? Or Okay. Uh, but I hear the word of the Lord saying there's going to be some laws and stuff passed. The, the city is literally going to release some funding for you to do the work in this building. And release the people to help you do the work. Hallelujah. I hear the word of the Lord say I don't know how they're, going to, how they're going to do it, but I see this building being given to you. Because you have done in the community. You have done in the community what the city could not do. Then I hear the word of the Lord saying, this is just the beginning, this is just the seed. Because it's being discussed in city council, in the meetings right now. It's being discussed. Well, if that pastor does good with that building there and does what he says he's going to do, let's let him have his other one over here. See what he wants to do. And the word is going to be, well, we're going to have to pass some stuff and do some emergency stuff. Right? But God said, the scripture in this hour is, when a man's ways, please the Lord. When a man's heart, please the Lord. He causes even his enemies to be at peace. God said, you're entering into a sweatless season. This is the first of the manifestation. But this is like the tip that shows out of the water of the iceberg. And I know you're thankful for this. We're all thankful. But I hear the word of the Lord saying, Man and woman of God, I'm about to blow your mind. In the same way, the same miracle, the same way I've done with this building, I'm going to do with several other buildings all over town. And I'm also... God said, what, watch, watch what I do for you concerning a house. Watch, watch how I work stuff. And I hear the word of the Lord saying, not just uh, one house, but three houses. And God said, keep this in your mind because there'll be a 30-fold house, a 60-fold house, and then a 100-fold house. So there'll be one that'll come almost immediately now, but that won't be the one. Then you'll move into an even greater one than that. That will still not the one. But there is one coming that God's going to deliver into your hands that another man is going to pay for. I believe it. I believe it. Put your hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We bless you. Oh, Father, we thank you for eyes to see, ears to hear, alert and receptive hearts and minds. Father, tell us what's on your heart tonight. Bless us tonight. Bless this house, Father. Oh, bless the apostle and the first lady, the, the ministers that are here, the ones that love him and have stood with him. Uh, Father God, the people that have been so faithful here. And Father, prove yourself when you said, this is but the tip. This is but the tip. And Father, we'll bless you in Jesus' name. Now, is there a uh, a banking building around here that has been shut down. There used to be a bank in it. There used to be a bank on a piece of property. Okay. Well, I, I just hear the, the pieces of property where the bank used to be is going to be some of the first to be delivered to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God's good. Yes, yes. 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 That's all right. Glory. Won't you give the Lord a hand clap before you? Well, I told Keto uh, tonight, I said, I can tell you the word that I have, but it don't make no sense to me. But after 33, 4, 5, however many years, I lose track. Uh, I've learned just to, you know, kind of keep moving on. So uh, I'm going to minister to you tonight starting out the book of Matthew. And this is indeed uh, 
This is indeed going to be, wait a minute, it may not be Matthew. I was, I was just seeing if you was paying, yeah, it's Luke. I was just seeing if y'all was paying attention. I knew all along it was really Luke. I was just seeing if y'all was paying attention. My, my friend, I heard the word of the Lord say, as you stood up here and opened your mouth, I hear the word of the Lord saying, as you opened your mouth, something shifted, something changed, and you went to a whole nother place, uh, mentally, physically, spiritually, and God said, that place, we would be comfortable calling that place the nations, but God calls it promotion. I hear the word of the Lord saying, uh, you have hungered and thirsted after that word, and God said, I shall cause you to be a master teacher that shall arise into the high places of God. And the people will say, come and let's see. Let's see what he says. Let's see what he's seen. Let's see what God showed him. I hear the word of the Lord saying, you're about to cause a move of God and a people of God to be excited about the word like they have haven't been in years before. So I hear the word of the Lord saying, I see uh, Australia, I see Japan, South America, Canada. I see all these places opening up. And I hear the word of the Lord saying, the first door that opens to the nations for you, it'll be like a domino effect. You'll go to that door and a door will open there. You'll go to that door and that. Because I hear the word of the Lord saying, behold, I have given you a word of instruction. A kingdom message, a word of revelation. You have fellowshiped with the mysteries. And what you have done in private, God is about to allow you to tell openly. I hear the word of the Lord saying, be sure and write the things down. Keep tapes, keep documents. Do not lose anything God is saying. For out of these things that you shall teach, volumes of books... And I, I see people putting put together books for you. You ain't even putting them together yourself. Putting them together for you. And they're saying, uh, the, you preach this so-and-so, just check that and be sure it's all right. It's ready for the publisher. I hear the word of the Lord say, your hunger is for that word. But there's a scribe in you. But God said, somebody else is going to do the labor for the scribe. I hear the word of the Lord saying, it's a promotion. It's a come up hither season for you, thus says the Lord. Amen. 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 Oh, we love God. I brought some tapes and books here, and I'm going to minister to you starting at uh, Luke, and uh, I'm going to minister to you some things, uh, some things I, I, I've studied and different, and I just kind of hold on to them myself, you know. And uh, God has begun to release some things from the kingdom standpoint. For me, and when I when I heard the man of God minister, I was just so inspired to to go ahead and be free to release some of the things that God has given me concerning the kingdom. Amen. Because I believe we're ready for those things. It ain't anything that's gonna scare you. It ain't nothing spooky or nothing like that. It's a it's a manifestation, us becoming a manifestation of an invisible God. That's what creation wants. Amen? So, uh, I, this is Keto's first book. This is my spirit. Keto, stand up. I didn't realize you. See, that's what you get for playing on your phone. What you play on your phone. This is Keto. <laughs> this Keto, this is my spiritual son. He travels with me now. He has laid down his church and everything to travel with me. He probably wished... <laughs> He could change his mind. But when you work with me, I'm like the mafia. Once you're in, you don't need to get out. So he ain't going nowhere. Not and live. Not and live to tell about. Amen. Not and live. His wife passed uh, a couple of years before my daughter did. And but long story short, that's we just kind of connected and fell in love and he said, Mom, the Lord told me to travel with you. And I said, well, the oh, Lord needs to tell me. Because I've been by myself a long time. And I'm ornery. People get on my nerves. <laughs> Waking me up all the time. Let me come up. And he said, I'm going to get on your nerves. And he said, what, what, what do you want to do that you can't do by yourself? What would you like to do? I said, there ain't but one thing I want to do. I want to be a master teacher and a master prophet. That's right. all. I don't care about nothing else other than that. I'm doing it with both legs or one leg. 
two arms or three arms. You know? I, I want to be a master teacher and a master prophet. All this stuff in the ministry and all this stuff I have to fool with and deal with, I don't care nothing about that. I want to give myself to the Word. And he said, I'll do that for you. So I am now becoming a master prophet and a master teacher. And that's what I do. And that's all I do. That's all I think about, all I write about, all I dwell about. Now, I do have a little bit of a life, so don't go feeling sorry for me. I do have a little bit of a life. I have two grandchildren I'm raising, so, you know, I do get out some. But my heart's out, and keto has picked up everything else. Would be, would be that God would send you a company of ketos. Would be keto, I'm a total invalid without him a total invalid and that's all right because i i don't want to go back to doing stuff my way amen this is keto's book the power of now it's talking about the god of now you need this to refocus your understanding and your mentality in the now we're in the past we're in the future we're in last week next week next month this book teaches you how to focus in the now because that's exactly where God is. All these other places we're traveling in our mind, last week, next week, next year, next month, all these places we're traveling, God is in the now. God is in the now. This book will teach you how to live in the now. And when you live in the now, you reap life. Life. There's no life nowhere except where you are right now. Amen. This is a purpose one-on-one practical wisdom for manifesting your vision. This is one I did. And we did Activate 2015. You'll want to get this tape because you'll want to know what was activated in 2015. Because you'll find out most of this already happened now. But we find out what was activated in 2015 and what's still yet to come uh, for 2015. So turn to the book of Luke. Very familiar scripture. Here, get on a minute. Very familiar scripture. Luke chapter 17. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. Now, for my scholars here, who, who knew all that stuff was in you, I mean, I knew you must know some, but I didn't know you knew that much. I wanted to go back and study again to be sure that he don't get one up on me. When you're the only woman in a group, it's rough sometimes. Now, I mean, it's rough, but I keep up with them. I keep, as it was, this, this name Noah, it may say in your Bible, N-O-E, but the name Noah in this scripture in Luke, whether it says N-O-A-H or N-O-E, means tithe wow. or tent. So we know that God is talking about something other than the other Noah. So in the days of Noah or in the days of the tithe, how many of you know the tithe is not a thing, it's a people? It's a people. It's the people. There, there are a people that belong to God. That's probably why you're here tonight. Because you're just trying to decide if you're going to choose God or not. But if you're a part of that tithe, those that he has called in him from before the foundation, you don't choose him. He chooses you. You may have thought about backsliding, wanting to backslide, but you didn't slide in. You can't slide out. You're in this thing. You're a part that was chosen in him from before the foundation. He has known you when you were in him before you were in the mother's belly. There is some certain things deposited in you for this generation that nobody can deliver but you. So there's a season when this tithe is going to begin to manifest itself. The tithe uh, is true. It can be financially. It can be all kinds of things. But when we talk about the tithe of God, we talk about a people a people that have been set aside for him yes. to honor him. And I'm not talking about just preachers or I'm not talking about ministry or anything like that. 
I'm talking about a whole section of people that have been called to honor God. Yes. Yes. Honor God. Whether they be school bus drivers, whether they be teachers, preachers, pastors, whether you work at McDonald's, where, where a people, there is a people that he has reserved unto himself that he calls his tithe. Now through that tithe, through that people, he will release prosperity into the earth. You can get prosperity two times, two ways. It can be uh, released by the hand of God, by seed time and harvest, some spiritual principles, or you can sweat for it. Now, I'm from the South. We prefer not to sweat. We don't have to. So I'm for the honoring God and the wealth being released through me to creation. Somebody said, well, I don't have a good enough job for that. See, we're not talking about your job. We're talking about you being the tithe of God. And when you are the tithe of God, not only are you responsible for your stuff, but a lot of times other people's stuff comes through you. You're like a warehouse. You're like a warehouse. Things come to my house some, sometimes. Uh, people mail stuff to me anonymously because they like to joke with me and everything. But I said, what, what is this? And what am I going to do with it? What? I said, oh, this ain't mine. This is so-and-so. I just repack it and ship it to this one. This is for the Lord. Ship it to that one. Ship it. Why? Because I know what belongs to me Amen. and what belongs to the kingdom. All right now. And now if it's shiny and has a tassel or two on it, it probably belongs to me. But still, even if it had a couple of tassels on it, and I knew it come to my house and I knew it was not mine, I would release it. It's one thing to be responsible with your own wealth. It's another whole thing to be responsible for kingdom wealth. Kingdom wealth don't count your wealth. So what is God doing? Uh, I, I'm doing a master class now once a month. You can go on the internet with Keto and find out what it's about. But God began to do, uh, speak the word of the Lord through me about the, the next move, the next breath of God we're going to begin to see to blow in the house of God is God's going to begin to blow and deal in the inward man. Because it's not that that goes into a man that defiles a man, but that that comes out. And there's about to be some judgment. And people say, oh no, but God says when there's judgment in the earth, the people learn righteousness. We've been afraid of judgment. Judgment means to bring something out of balance into balance. Because why? A false balance is an abomination of the Lord. When you see the abomination that maketh desolation, desolate, uh, spoken of, and, and again, this is what God has showed me, because there's 18,000 ways you can preach the word, and it can all be correct. Amen. Different levels, different people. The, the abomination that has made us desolate, sitting in the temple of God, which ought not, well, I'm going to get out there, I'm telling you, we're sitting in the temple of God. We're not talking about a temple in Jerusalem. We're talking about what know you not that you Yes, right. Or the temple. Okay. So when you see an abomination within yourself sitting in the temple of God, and what is the only abomination? A false balance. The abomination is already in the temple. We're so out of balance and crazy and everything's the devil, ain't nothing our fault. Devil in the bush, devil in the tree, devil over here, devil over here. Mm -hmm. I know, I was quiet when he told me that too. But we are out of balance as the house of God. And God is going to do an inward, individual, personal work within each of us and bring us back into a balance together. Every joint supplying that is needed to make increase to the body of Christ. Now, uh, I, I believe Paul wrote, said, Foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Is that what he said? Yes. Having begun in the Spirit, now are you going to be made perfect by the flesh? 
What we're trying to do is fix ourselves up. And we tell our young ladies, we say, don't wear pants, don't wear shorts, don't wear red lipstick. We, we give them all kinds of rules and regulations. What we're trying to do is clean up the flesh. Well, you know, you can't be saved and wear that. Don't worry, there's such a thing as the Holy Ghost got more power than you. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. Well, you can't act that way. You can't act that way and be a Christian. You can't do this. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's coming. You can't do this. Man. But we have raised up. We have got a list of things to clean up the outside. Come on. Well, she sure don't look like. Because uh, I know some uh, movie stars and stuff. Some well-known people that are Christians. And I, when I run into, I say, Oh yeah, I know her. She's a Christian. Huh? Jesus. I say, Yeah, she's Christian. She said, Well. I didn't know that. I said, well, that's what she told me. But she lied. She said she was a Christian, so I'm calling her a Christian. Amen? Amen? We got a, well, well, she don't wear enough clothes to be a Christian. Well, I know she cover up a little bit, but we'll get around to that. Amen? Let every man work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen? So the sooner we can just stop being everything for everybody else and just pay attention to what's in here. That's right. That's right. Let's get what's in here. He said, having begun with the spiritual work, can you perfect now by the flesh? First thing we do when people come into the church, we want to clean them up. Uh, brush them up. Tell them what they can and can't wear. And I, and I know there's a morality and there's a code and there's a thing, there's a way we should present ourselves. But we're trying to perfect the flesh. And in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. Besides, in the flesh, there is a war, a law working in our members called the law of sin. And what we want to do, we don't do it. What we don't want to do, we do. So it don't matter what color lipstick we got on. God ain't paying attention because he's so dealing with our stuff that's hid in our heart. Now, this is the days of Noah. They drank. I, and I know some of this is spooky. Some of it's been pretty spooky, I think. I don't know. I wasn't raised in church, so I, I'm, I apologize right now for anything I'm about to say. Who, I, I'm wrong and everybody else is right. But this is just what God showed me. It, amen? So they ate, they drank, they married. Don't get nervous, proof. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> I've got to make him nervous sometimes, but he sure does cover it well. They ate, they drank, they married, they give it in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, it was also in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted. Uh, but on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone and destroyed them all. Even so shall it be. And what was God saying about Noah and Lot? Life goes on. It's going to be like any other day. We've tried to make up big signs and stuff. Well, you know these earthquakes. There's always earthquakes. Well, you, what about that flood? There's always flood. The day that Jesus is revealed is going to be like any other day. Because he's God. He changes not. The only difference when he is revealed, the only difference is going to be you. Life's going to go on. Right. People are going to always be people. People are going to be crazy. People are going to be saved. People are going to, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. Everything, life is going on. Yes. But there's something happening with God's tithe. There's something happening with his remnant. And as life goes on for everybody else, he is perfecting a body for himself. Yes. I believe he said it best when he said the birds have nests, the foxes have hope, but the Son of Man does not have what? A no, place to lay his head. Right. Now, now, consequently, we have believed that the bride was his body, but how many of you know that's two different realms of God? Right. Let's stop. Let's stop. Jesus is not uh, uh, transgendered. He's got a man head and a man body. 
Now he ain't confused about his sexuality. I don't know why anybody else would be, but you know, that's not my business either. He's not transgender. He's got a man's head and a man's body. The bride is the woman. The bride is the one that bears the children. The bride is the one that uses his name. The bride is the one that brings offspring into the kingdom. Well, I thought there's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb. Honey, there's already been a marriage of the supper of the Lamb. If there hadn't already been a marriage supper of the Lamb, then we're birthing illegitimate children into the kingdom. You're already married to him. You're already married to him. You're already one with him. He's already come into the bedchamber and stripped your clothes off and laid down on top of you. You naked and him naked. And then as in the consummation of your relationship with him, all of a sudden y'all have become one. Now it's no longer you that speaks but him. You don't even use your name no more. You even come in his name instead of your name. And once he has molded you and made you and shaped you, you go from being the bride into being his body. His body. As he is, so are you. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ. Let, 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 because this is deep. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, being in the form of God. Thought it not robbery to be equal or one with God. You're not robbing God by becoming one with Him. That's right. You are releasing creation. Yeah. 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 Creation is groaning, waiting for the manifestation yeah. or the placement of the sons. Not the bride, not the children, not the sheep, not the goat. Yes. Come on. Creation is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That's right. Well, I, I'm just going to be a sheep and the shepherd. Well, a, a, a sheep, I just want a shepherd. I just want to go. That's all right, and that's your choice. But he ain't going to marry you. He ain't going to marry a sheep. You're going to have to grow up and become a woman whose breasts are full of sincere milk of the word in order to feed his offspring, because that's what the bride does. You're going to have to grow up. A sheep is a wonderful place to be, but he's not going to marry that. He's not into that, whatever that animal stuff. Whatever that is. Oh, Jesus. Well, well, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Oh, that's okay. That's a beautiful place to start. But everything in God is progressive. Everything in God grows. You cannot, you cannot be a child at... When you've been serving God 30 years, and then you leave church after you've been serving God 30 years, you leave church and say, oh, I don't feel like he's feeding me. I don't feel like I'm being fed. You're 30 years old. You're supposed to feed yourself. What do you mean? I don't feel like I'm being fed. Into him, not just into emerging with him, growing up and becoming him. Growing up and becoming him. You can be a child, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, if I was you, I wouldn't want to be 30 and 40 years old and still be a child. But that I would be embarrassed to poop on myself after I've been serving God 30 years. But you know, that's okay. I ain't here to judge or say nothing like that. So you can stay a child. You can stay a child, but you will never be his bride because he's not a pedophile. He will not marry children. He will not be engaged to a child. He will not marry a child. He will never make a, a child a bride until they grow up into him and become the bride. So you can be any of these things in him you want to be. There's different realms. There's 12 gates into heaven. Paul said there's three heavens. I've been to the third one. Uh, there's 12 gates to the city. There's all kinds of different. He's alpha, omega, beginning and end, and first and last. There's all kinds of realms and places for him to display himself. And then if you want to be a child, he loves you. You can be a child, but... but. 
you'll never bear his children. And you'll never consummate and become him. Because his desire is for you to be a visible expression of an invisible God. Why do you think there was excitement on the day Jesus was born? Because God is spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. No wonder the angels were activating after all of the eons of never having seen the invisible God. He was about to lower himself into flesh. And the angels were saying, come and see what God looks like. Come and see what God looks like. We've never seen him. All these eons. He's about to be manifest in the flesh. And another angel said, well, he looks like Adam. Looks like me. Looks like me. So, everything's going on. Life's going on. We, we wait for Gorbachev to be the Antichrist because he's got a birthmark or something like that. And, and, and I don't know who the Antichrist is. Is now I'm just going to give you a clue, and I ain't going to preach up. But anti, anti means instead of. It doesn't mean against. Doesn't mean against. anti means instead of. And when the antichrist sits in the temple, whatever's in there is not Christ. It's something instead of Christ. All right. All right. All right. Boy, I ain't want to do this to y'all. Come on, go ahead, come on. Is this all right, Prue? You... <laughs> and the Antichrist is you. Jesus. When you sit in the temple of God, not made with hands, not the one in Jerusalem. No, I don't know what they're doing over there. But what know you not? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. When you sit in your house and try to be your own God, you are antichrist or instead of. When you want to do your own thing, that's antichrist. When you want to be ill and mean and bitter and hold on to this like that, that's antichrist. It's instead of. It's not the real. Yes, God. Yes, God. So as God begins to deal with you, because you know what? I was I, I was praying for everybody. And then all of a sudden I woke up. I said, well, I, I think I need help. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't doing nothing. It ain't like there's nothing for me to do up in the mountains that don't concern two grandchildren, five dogs, and four horses. That's about my limit right there. So I wasn't seeing it. wasn't nothing like what I was doing, whatever it is people do. What did I do? I said, it's me, oh Lord. In the need of prayer. Because while I was praying for everybody else, I began to see some of the stuff. Some of the tradition and religion. That was, even though I wasn't raised in church. That was locked up on the inside of me. That I needed to deal with before I ever prayed for anybody else. There is only one thing in earth that I've found. I've studied the Bible, so you study too, because if there's something else, call me and let me know. But there's only one thing I've found that makes the word of none effect. Only one thing that I've found. Your tradition. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Not the devil. Oh, yes, God. Come on. Say it. Say it. Your tradition has made my word of none effect. We have been so busy playing church, trying to wear the right clothes, trying to do right, trying to, and all of that's beautiful, that the world is going to hell, and we are the answer. And we've sat together and so worked on ourselves and so tried to get this flesh perfected. Now, I've got good news for you. The flesh ain't going to never be perfected. You're always going to be stupid. You're always going to be stupid stuff. But this fat bear said, there's no cure for stupid. Stupid has to be grown out of it. You grow out of things. You're going to grow out of things. Don't be so hard on yourself. Children poop themselves. The kids in high school don't. What happened? They grew out of pooping on themselves and went into high school. You'll grow out of something. 
like, well, I've been saved a month. I've been, I should be doing better than this. Honey, you're right on time. You're right on time. Cut yourself some slack. You're right on time. Let God, God is the, the potter that works on the clay. And uh, he told Jeremiah, he said, let's go down to the potter's house and let me show you how the potter, who is God, works and molds and forms the clay, which is you. It's God working in you both to do and will of his good pleasure. You might not like it, but that don't matter. You might not agree with him, but that don't matter because you were chosen. You didn't get pregnant when you got saved. You come here pregnant and you're going to be miserable on this earth till you deliver what you got pregnant with when you were in hell before you were ever in your mom. So life goes on. Life goes on. It's like Noah entering into an identifiable ark. Uh, a people and we, we can take that in a whole different direction because we know now that we are the ark that contains him yes. uh, there has to be two birds released there's always only two a vulture or a raven and a dove we've seen the vulture released from the house of God we haven't seen the dove yet but it's coming uh, it'll be like it was in the days of Noah. When God brings his tithe, or God brings the people together. Verse 30. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is, what does your Bible say? Revealed. revealed. Yours says revealed too. Because they told me, my Bible said, come. So shall it be in the days that Jesus comes back. And you ain't never heard that before. But that's not what the Bible says. Oh, he's coming like a thief in the night. Well, wait a minute. Let's not get his revelation and his consummation of the ages and his coming to establish the kingdom on earth. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Let's not get his revelation and his coming confused. That's right. Because when he's revealed, he exposes himself to you in ways you will remember. Yes. When he is revealed, he comes as a refiner's fire and fuller soap. Right. He'll come as a healer, deliverer, sanctifier, holy yes. ghost. He'll come as your father and turn right around, come as your husband. Yes. Jesus. 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 That's right. Glory. Right. There's a revelation of him going on. And the revelation of him is taking place within his body. If they see you, they've seen the Father. This is the way it's going to be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. There is an uncovering of him. There is an exposing of himself to creation. And it is the only legal way he can do it. And that's through a body. That's right. And you're that body. You're that body. Get ready. Well, I, oh, wait a minute, Sister Connie. I ain't been saved that long. Been saved long enough. Uh, well, uh, I'm not too sure about... Doctor uh, about doctor. It don't matter about doctrine. Scripture says we're coming to the unity of the faith. Never says we're coming to the unity of the doctrine. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. So, uh, consequently, a lot of things that we call clean and unclean, it's just our opinion. <laughs> now, I ain't being ugly or anything like that, but it's just our opinion. I got a preacher friend that's so religious, he will not eat in a restaurant that sells wine. He will not eat in a restaurant that sells wine. 
I said, listen, you have got me beat back to Taco Bell, Burger King, and McDonald's. They're the only places, they're probably going to eventually, they're the only places that don't sell wine. And I'll be darned if I want to be a queen in the house of God, a part of his body, and eat a Big Mac three times a day. I'm not going to do it. It ain't going to work. I said, don't call clean and unclean and common and all that when you don't even know what you work. Worry about what's common and unclean in here. In here. So get ready. There's something fixing to happen to you. In that day, verse 31, talking about the days of Noah when the tent is reserved. This is a lot of stuff. I know you can get the tape, but this is what I want to get to. In that day, he is on the housetop. His goods are in the house. Let him not come down. In that day when Christ is revealed, don't come down from where he has called you to be. Do not come. Well, I'm just a sinner by saved by grace. No, you're not. You were chosen in him from the, before the foundation. You were what the book of Job talks about when God reminded Job. Where were you when the sons of God sang together? No, you're not just a sinner saved by grace. Don't come down from where God is putting you. When I can't do that job, I, I, I don't have that training. Let he that's on the housetop not come down. The housetop deals with your thinking. Let him. Well, I can't be all that in God. Yes, you can and more. Yes. If you don't come back. Right. Let him that's on the house top. In that day, uh, he's on the house top. His goods in the house. Let him. Uh, uh, in, let's see. In that day, he was on the house top. His goods are in the house. Let him not come down to take them away. Likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Now, one thing I do is study the Bible. And I believe that the man is a laborer in God's vineyard. And I found out that this means, and you can look up the Greek and Hebrew, that when there's a revelation of Jesus, and you're in the field, when there's a revelation of Jesus, you're in an open place waiting to receive him, there are those that are going to turn back. The scripture says for their clothes, but that word clothes means mammal. There are those that are going to turn back and try to pick up a past move of God. Because, see, it's about not coming down from the housetop. It's about not going back to get your clothes left at the house, wherever it is you started. It's about going forward in Him. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to save his life shall lose it. Whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night, there will be two men in one bed, one will be taken and the other left. Now, this is where it's going to get a little nasty, but it's all right, y'all. I, I, this, this, uh, this is good for you. <laughs> the, what is happening here? Jesus ain't coming. He's being revealed. <sighs> well, as a matter of fact, there, I believe in the consummation of the ages of this. I just don't know that he's coming back because I don't know that he ever left. Jesus! Because oh he told me he'd never leave me nor forsake me even well, to the end of the age. So said. when we talk about him coming back, we talk about not him as much as the rulership of his kingdom uh, on earth as it is in heaven. So, so I don't know about the coming back stuff because I don't know where he's been and where he'd go. But for me, he's been here. Amen? Right. Now, when he begins to be revealed, not just born again, not just, I just want to be a sheep in the past. I'm just a child of God. No, when there begins to be a revelation of him within you, something begins to happen. In that day, There'll be two men in bed. Somebody said, well, I thought that was talking about the rapture. You, you can preach it that way if you want to. because that, uh, uh, however, however you want to do that, that's fine. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying I've just got something for you to consider. 
Lord. Just consider it. I'm, I'm not messing up no doctrine or nothing like that. Let now, when Jesus is revealed, there ain't no reason for two men to be in the bed together. It don't matter what the reason. If nothing else, one of them needs to be working a job. <laughs> Two men will be in the bed together. One will be taken and the other left. This is not spooky at all. Not spooky at all. Right now, there's two men in this bed. <laughs> The old man. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Come on. Jesus. The head is on the housetop. Not come down. Don't turn back to pick up the bell from yesterday. No, no, no. You, he's being revealed. We're not talking about a coming. We're talking about a revelation of him within his body, within his people. Two men in the bed. The old man is being taken. When he said he will increase yeah. and wow. I will decrease. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Two men in the bed. One be taken. Two women grinding together at the mill. Do you know that there's two churches right now? Yeah. A carnal church and spiritual church. Yeah. Right. But let me can I bring it down a little bit more? There are also two women in you. Wow. There's a true bride and a harlot. Oh! Just get that way, yeah. Just get that way. There are two women in here. And they're both trying to grind meal and feed you. And the true bride's feeding you one thing, and the harlot, the, the harlot wife wants you to have a Big Mac. When the true bride wants you to have flesh and blood. Right. Say that now. Say it. Two women grinding at the meal. There's two people, two women in your house trying to feed you. One is decreasing. Right. Hallelujah. One is being taken away. And all that's being left is her. Praise God. Two men in the bed, two women at the field. Two women, uh, excuse me, two men in the bed, two women... I'm trying to get past this, but I let me just go on and say it. Shoot, I've been say it, say it. killed my chance of ever being on TV anyway. Last year. <laughs> <laughs> TV ain't gonna never call. I just know it. But that, that, I'm alright all right with that. Right. I'm, all, right. I'm okay with that. Two women uh, at the meal. Anytime the scripture talks about the woman, she talks about the soul. Uh -huh. So actually what you have is two <clears throat> minds. Two women. The soul represents the intellect. Wisdom is a woman. Now you understand the really, really, really the thrust behind will set all the women down. Okay. Well, we did. And the first woman we set down was wisdom. She had. She has a voice. Anytime the Bible talks about the woman, that's why the woman's all, the soul's always called in adultery from Genesis to Revelation. Ain't never the man. It's the woman, the receiver, the soulish part. So you have two women trying to tell you what to do, an old mind and a new mind. A double-minded man is what? One's leaving. And she may be crying a little bit, but she'll be all right. She's got plenty of places to go. She won't be homeless. All kinds of men owe her child support. So she ain't going to never be poor. How she think? How do you think she got on that beast with all them jewels and stuff? Child support. <laughs> And birth so many kids, babies, ideas, companies, and all this while they owe her forever. Two men grinding, two women grinding, the other one, two men shall be in the field. 
one left and one took. The field represents your life. It can represent your mind. It can, it can represent the, the, at the end of the day, right now, there's two in here. That's why you're double-minded. That's why you love God on Sunday and on Monday. You say, I must have backslid overnight. I don't know why. I just feel, I just feel so dry. I've been, I've been preaching 33 years. And, and, and last week, 30, 33 years, and last week I went to God and said, God, I didn't backslide, did I? And not know it. Because that sure is dry around here. And I mean, I ain't really hearing from you and nothing's happening. Or so, do I, did I backslid and maybe I didn't know it? And maybe I need to repent. And 33 years I've been serving God. The devil is alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Jesus. And so is that old man. That's right. That's right. Come on, Jesus. That's right. Thank you, Lord God. Two men in the field, one left. And they answered and said, this is a conclusion of the matter. Where, where are all these dead stuff going? He said, wherever the carcass is, there will, some translations say the evil, but actually the original translation says vultures. Wherever the carcass is, there shall the vultures be gathered together. Can I prophesy to you? Prophesy. There's about to be another move, but it ain't going to be of God. It's going to be over old dead stuff. That we should have let pass away. Yes, God. Right, right, right. Yes, God. Yes, God. They're the vultures. It was it, it was man at one time, but now it's dead. There will the vultures be gathered together. What am I saying? There is a revelation of him coming in you. And you may feel like sometimes he comes as a thief in the night. Because you don't get to say what he does. That's right. You don't get to have an opinion. Amen. You don't get to Amen. open the door. It's already open. Jesus. There is a revelation of him in the earth. And he's dealing with everybody in this house. But him. A contrary mind, contrary soul, contrary feel, contrary. If it ain't him, it's got to go. Amen. Got to go. Amen. Now, why are some of you going through some of the things you're going through? We could say the devil was attacking us, but we're going to put him over there. I think we give him too much credit, but that's another message. So, what are... What's going on with you? What's Amen. the struggle about? What's your brain all tore up about? <laughs> but, but what's going on? There's something being taken from you. All right. Yes, God. Yes, yes. God. Yes. Yes. yes, God. You didn't agree to it, and he never asked your opinion. No. He said, I will come just like a thief does, mm -hmm. and I'm going to steal away that part of you that is not God. So, what's going on with you? You're being robbed. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. You're being robbed of your ideas, what you think, who you think God is. If you I don't like her, I do like him. You're being robbed of everything that is of the old man. And when he gets finished, Hallelujah. all that will be left is him. Now, I'm talking about something beyond fighting a devil. I'm talking about fighting you. All right. Oh, Lord, it's getting tired. Come on, you Jesus. Come on. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm talking about fighting you, yeah. fighting yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. Because you know what? I found out. Now this is just me, and this is just my opinion. I would rather wrestle the devil every day than Come fight with me. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know nobody else feels that way. Right. But I would much rather have an attack of the enemy mm -hmm. 
than have me attack myself from come within on, come on, with on, adverse on. thoughts and ideas and memories Jesus. that should be dead. Yes, God. Ah. Yes, God. Oh, God. Oh, Glory! Wow. Some of us saved 20 years and still not delivered, not healed. Jesus. It ain't your fault. It ain't your fault. Some of us some of us been waiting for God to do something years and years and years. What That's you right. need to know is God is a God of eternity. That's right. That's right. And it has been, will be, and is going on you every day. God is taking your own mind, That's your right. own life, That's right. your own soul. I know we want it to be a miracle. I know it just we want it to be snap, 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 snap overnight. But I found out that God's not into magic. You can't be serving the devil on Monday and on Tuesday preach to 5,000. That's magic. That ain't supernatural. That's magic. Everything in you that, that does not magnify the kingdom of God is being took. And the devil could come and go in there a little while, but a lot of what you're dealing with is you. Your attitude. Your memories, yes. your understanding. Well, I've been waiting on deliverance uh, 20 years. This coming, it's been coming for 20 years. It's just line upon line, precept upon precept. I don't know why God does things like this, and then sometimes he does things in a progressive manner. I know a lot of times it's healthier for us for him to do it in a progressive manner because we couldn't handle overnight deliverance right. yes, from right. a 20-year bondage. Right. That's just me, though. What's going on? Something is being taken. I believe the scripture talks about it when it says that that was first is last and that that was last has become first. So the things you used to love and enjoy all of a sudden don't mean nothing. That's right. I know that's right. And the things you used to hate well, I'm going to get saved when I get old, so I, I ain't got nothing else to do. Then I'm going to get saved. The, the very things you thought has become first. Glory to God. Why? Because there's something going on in you. Thank you, Lord. God's always going to move out here. There's always going to be ministry. There's always going to be deliverances and healing. But the Son of Man is being revealed. And the only legal place for him to be revealed is in man. And before he can reveal himself in man, Oh, I'm getting deep. Yeah. Is, is this all right? That's yeah. all right. Before he can reveal himself in man, there has to be a great falling away of the old. That's right. This is revelation. It's a revelation. Before the man of sin be revealed, there must be a falling away. Away of the old man because the man of yes. sin is you. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. Charles got his own Russian to run. Yeah. <laughs> Time for Sister Alice to come out of Wonderland. Come on. Yes, yes. Listen, don't worry about the devil. We know he's real. We know he's alive. We know he's doing whatever it is he's doing. But God is doing something yes. bigger yes, than anything he could possibly come up with. God is preparing himself a body. Yes. Mm. Yes. Sacrifices of bulls and goats, you, you were never pleased with that. Mm -hmm. But a body, you have prepared me. Glory now, if you want to stay the bride, I don't blame. Listen, I don't blame him because he'll give you a house and a car and make you pay. You ain't even got to write your own name. You just got to know how to say it in the name of Jesus. And all that. But the body is what's crucified. Mm -hmm. yes, God. 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 That's why you're tasting of things that Sister Christian down the street don't even know is going on. Yes, God. The bride was never crucified. The body is crucified. 
Yes, Paul yes, talked about it when he said, I was crucified with him, nevertheless I live. But it's not me that lives now. That's right. And the, the life that I live now, I live yeah. by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. There's something even bigger than your faith. Yeah. His faith. Oh, hallelujah. All things work together. What? All things. ALL, all things work together for what? Good. To them that are love good, to them that are the call according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, hello Jeremiah, he also did predestinate that you might be conformed into the image or the body of the dear son. Yes. That's your issue. That's your issue. You ain't backslide. You ain't backslide. You ain't trying to do better. That flesh can't do better. There's a law of sin that works in it. It's not the, and the flesh of the natural man receiveth not the things of God. Neither can he know it them. For they're spiritually desired. Your flesh is going to always act up. You're always going to have to be the boss of your flesh. But in the meantime, God has prepared himself a body. And that body is you. I said all that to say this. Look at stuff that you're going through. And we know the devil, we rebuke and resist him and all that stuff. And we know he's out there. We know that he's real. But consider some of the things that are going on in your life. Is it the devil or is it the old man trying to sit up in the bed and talk? When he's supposed to be God. It, it could, be, could be the devil all day. Or is it the woman, the grinder of the wheat, trying to feed you bull instead right. of flesh and blood? Right. 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 Consider, it could be the devil, we rebuke him and mind him, but could it be there's an old man in the field that is upset because he can't have his way no more. Why? Because when I was a child, I spoke as a child, understood child, but when I put away child's things, when I grow I put away childish things. We're going to have to put away some childish things yes. that the devil make me do. Yes. It's an attack. And, I'll, and begin to know that in the day that he is revealed, there's a war that goes on all right. And it's in the members. There's an old you that don't want to vacate the premises. That's right. That's right. But you can no longer afford the rent. Ooh, that's right. Ooh, that's right. The old you can't possibly pay the price for what the new you is about to walk for. The old you will say, I ain't slept in in 24 years. I need to sleep. That's the old you. That ain't the devil. That's you. Want to sleep in. No, get up. Yeah. In the day that he is revealed, and he's revealed, he's going to fill himself with the heaven and earth, but his passion is to be revealed in his body. Which body you are. And what is he doing? He is finishing something with you. That's why we're saying, oh, we're not to be thinking like this. I've been saved 30 years. Oh, well, maybe that's just me. I want to know better than this. I've been saved 30. What's wrong with me, that old man? Ah, thank you. Glory. Well, I don't know who she thinks she is. She thinks she's so cute and all, all that. I, I just, uh, now, Dr. Connie, that, that's the devil. No, that's me. Uh -huh. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Come on, I need to bring myself under suggestion, my body under suggestion, my thoughts under suggestion. Because after 30 years, after 30 years, there's times when I want to get a little bit of attitude. Now, I wouldn't even be here if he didn't give me breath 
Who am I to give an attitude about? Yeah. Right. All right, Dad. All right. It ain't the devil. It's the old me that likes to have things my way, do things my way, go where I want to, don't know where I want to go to, do exactly what I want to do. It's the old me, and she is dying. Thank you, Lord. You are wrestling. It is painful. I'm closing with this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Yes. Principalities yes. and powers. That's principles and doctrines. Yes. Yes. Principalities and powers. The rulers of the darkness yes. of this age. Yes. What darkness ruled you in your day? The rulers of the darkness of this age. Spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Unpure, unclean thoughts. Everything, everything is about the mind. You're not wrestling with something. You're wrestling with yourself. What would I tell you? This just got something you gotta go through. Yes, God. Let's do it. Let's do it. Something. Fat one Fat Bear told me years ago, of course he was high, so well he was high every day of his life. But, I mean I didn't know what I but he said, Reverend, how's the church doing? I said, They're they're doing all right. He said, Church does stupid things, don't they? I said, Yeah, but so do I. He said, There's no cure for stupid. Stupid has to be grown out of. And we've all done stupid things. That's right. We blame the devil and done this and done that. And I, I recognize him. When we should have. Mortified. The demons. We've been talking about everybody else. When we should have been putting on crutch. Come on. Yeah. We've been do, we've been going to all the gay marches, anti-gay, pro-gay, all all the, when we should have been. Come on, dealing with the pervert. That's right. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Glory to God. Now I said all that to say this. Thus says the Lord. The Son of Man is being revealed. And at first, it's not going to be pretty. Because he's not showing up anywhere but in you. And before he shows up to his fullness in you, somebody's got to vacate the premises. So, think it not strange when you go through Think it not strange. There's a process going on. God has an investment. You are what is man that you're mindful of him? What is man that your mind is so full of him? God's consumed with you. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And he wants to take over. Yes. And you're reacting just like we all do. But at the end of the day, there's something in you dying. And something coming to life. What am I telling you? Let it die. Let it go. Don't flirt with it. Don't think about it. Don't do that. What's that perverted thing? Necromancy ain't that when you sleep with a dead person? You got somebody dead and you don't sleep with them. You don't talk to them. You don't do your own seance with them yourself. You ain't got nobody there but you. You don't talk to a dead person. That old man. Oh, oh Lord. Let it go. Let him die. Let him be taken. That's right. Because what remains will be God. And what remains will be that collective body that will answer the groan of creation. Show us the Father and it will suffice us. A groaning creation. 
a groaning crash is waiting for that prayer to be answered. Yes, they are. And as God finishes the work in his body, we will stand and say, if you've seen me, you've seen me. No wonder our shadows is supposed to heal. Mm -hmm. No wonder Jesus said even greater works shall you do that God is bringing you to a place of a supernatural life. Your flesh don't like it, but it'll get over it. Let it die. Let it go. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't flirt with, well, you know you always did like take a drink every night, but don't flirt with that. You, that's a dead person talking, and I'm not in the mood for a seance tonight. So go to the country, we always say we like to have us a drink at night. We say we like to have us a quart Because that drink is a quart to us. That's free. So, readjust you. Say, so, wait a minute, why am I struggling? Because I still want my way. I still want to do my thing. Don't want to come to church. Don't want to tithe. Mad because the pastor don't feed me and I'm 50 years old and so they got 50 <laughs> years old and still mad at the pastor because he don't feed me no more. Oh, he don't feed me no more. <laughs> 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 this is season for you to put on in court. That's good. It's a season for you to put on immortality. Yes. Yes. And it's a season for creation to see him. Yes. And the only way they will see him is through you. Thank you, Jesus. Lift yes. your hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. Yes, God. And Father, we say, teach us. Teach us, teach us the difference. between the blessed and the profane. Yes, God. Yes, God. Teach us the difference between the clean and the unclean. Yes, God. Because we have cast the devil out of women that was harlots. When you said in Galatians chapter 5, boredom is a work of the flesh. Yes. Ain't no spirit involved. Oh, Jesus, it's quiet. But help me now. I can remember my record. I've got a 33 year record. Will you don't leave me now? Father, teach us to mortify our flesh. Teach us to bring it into subjection. We don't have to have pressure on us to the fact that our flesh will be perfect because it will never be perfect. But we can bring it under subjection to the law of the spirit of life that dwells within us. Yes, Father, let us rethink things. How many things are we blaming on this one, that one, this and that, when we really just need to re-educate ourselves? Yes, Maybe need some counseling. Yes, Maybe need some intense prayer. Yes, now, oh, Father, I minister to us through the Holy Ghost, for you are preparing yourself a body. And within that body is going to be all of you and none of us. Yes, God. Yet we shall walk the earth yes. to bless creation. Yes. Oh, Father, transform us. Transform us by the renewing of our mind. Shift our thinking. For, Father, you have said that on the outside is always being worked on. But when judgment begins at the house, it's the inner work that starts working. Father, let us back up and think again if we have not cooperated with you. If we have not honored you with our first fruits. If we've not honored you with our time. If, we, if we've not been faithful. If we've waited on somebody else to do something we should be doing. Father, we repent. We want to grow yes, up. Yes, we want to yes, put away childish things. Yes, yes. We want to move 
into the vastness of the fullness of God. We want to do like Paul said when he said, I fellowshiped with the mysteries. We want to fellowship with the mysteries, Father God. Father, begin a shift in our thinking tonight. And we'll bless you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to receive C, and I'm going to receive uh, $120.